Spider-Man is my favorite superhero, and my Spidey display is the centerpiece of the secret lounge. But what happens to all those wall crawlers not on display? Let's find out. All right, so here's a giant box of Spider-Man figures. Let's uh, let's test my knowledge of the wall crawler and see what we can find. So, first things first, let's grab one of these bad boys. Oh man, this is this is so heartbreaking. So, this is the Mafex Spider-Man, the one with the comic paint job. You can see it's got uh, more of the comic stylings, more uh, more so than the first one that came out. I mean, it's one of the absolute best Spider-Man figures when it comes to articulation, sculpting, just the overall look of it. But it's unfortunately one of the most fragile dadgum figures that I've ever had. That's that's like gummy tape that I've put on there just to try to get one of his hands to stick on because I bought two of these and I was using them for, you know, action figure photography and figure posing uh, earlier last year. And in trying to change out the hands, I snapped the little peg at the wrist. You can see it right there broken. So I'm like, well, I don't want to do it, but I did buy a second one. Yep, there it is. Snapped both of these. So this one actually has no wrist pegs. And because they're so small, like there's nothing you can do about it. So I mean, this is just, this is just a figure that's just going to sit in this box because there's so little that I can do. I guess I could glue the hands on, but oh, that's so frustrating. This is so frustrating. Now, this is a good one. Here is the Mafex. Not Mafex. This is the Mezco 112 Spider-Man. So, this bad boy is still six inches in scale, but this is all kind of cloth. You can see it's like a cloth costume. Really, really cool design. Nice detail. And then it's got like a really great, like, Ditko Amazing Fantasy head sculpt. It comes with two different head sculpts. It comes with a bunch of like web effects. It comes with a ton of hands. This is a neat figure. I actually, I bought two of these as well just because I love it so much. I have one on display down in the secret lounge and then this one I use for figure photography when I'm doing Spider-Man poses or trying to recreate comic covers and stuff. This one works really well for that. So that's a, whew, that's a good one. Oh, here's a cool one. Okay, so this, this is Diamond Select, I think, because I think it's like a little bit bigger. Isn't this one of the uh, the PlayStation figures, or is this Marvel Legends? It's just kind of big. It's hard to tell. I can't find the I can't find the name on it. But this is like that PS4 Gamerverse version. Really cool figure. I I'm somebody who likes my Spideys very very classic, but this isn't too much of a departure. You know, the white that big white spider. You know, the big white spider on the back that really looks like kind of the Sam Raimi version from the movies. A um, little funky going down the leg, but still, that's a, that's a pretty cool figure. Here we go. Black suit, symbiote. This, I think, was that Spider-Man Unlimited line. So this thing's like eight inches. So here's a standard six-inch figure. And you can see the difference. I mean, you can clearly see how much bigger this guy is. And so they did two. They made... Obviously, Black Suit Spider-Man, and we'll find it. Somewhere down in there, we're going to get the red and blue, but I love this. Really good look. Really good, dedicated sculpt. Lots of articulation on this bigger figure. He doesn't fit in with my Marvel Legends, and it's, fine. it's hard to find a spot for him in the display, but it's still a really, really sweet Spidey figure. Okay, got a couple of these. So, this is the Toy Biz Marvel Legends first appearance Spider-Man, and it's on the... Spider-Man Classics body. So here's the original Spider-Man Classics figure. Here is the first appearance figure. This is the one where I thought that the eyes were a little more Jack Kirby, Amazing Fantasy 15, so I tried to switch it over to a Ditko. These are the much more McFarlane type of eyes. Great figures. Here's one that we actually featured not long ago in our Spider-Man Panels to Plastics video. This is the Alex Ross version of Spider-Man. It has a very dedicated Alex Ross head sculpt and a very specific Spidey logo on the back. If you haven't checked out any of our panels to plastics videos, please do that. It's a series where I really get into the origins of the designs of the figures uh, and then go from there. This one came out in the Spider-Man Classics line. I don't know that it's necessarily 
indicative of any one specific artist, but kind of a different head shape, different eye shape. And that's one of the beauties of Spider-Man is even though the costume can be the same, we're going to see like 20 different types of eyes, 20 different types of eye pieces as we go through this box. Well, now here's one that's pretty different. Spider side. Oh, this is pretty cool. So obviously he's got, you know, eight limbs, six arms, two legs, totally new sculpt in Marvel Legends. I think a lot of people got, got down on this figure because it's got the carved in web lines, but it doesn't have any kind of paint wash to delineate them. But look at like the, the detail that like hash kind of look both on the, the, the blue as well as on the eyepieces. Plus, man, that's just a, a crazy cool comic ac accurate version of Spider-Man that actually appeared in the books. I dig it. I think that's pretty sweet. Ah, uh, another one of the panels to plastics. This being the J. Scott Campbell Spider-Man with the infamous Spider logo going down on the chest as opposed to going up. Love this one. Love the action feature. Again, this came out in the Spider-Man Classics line, so it was really dedicated more toward kids. But Toy Biz was great because they would make a figure that they could sell to kids and to moms, but still give us something that was different and unique for our collections. Really cool. Now, the flip side of that is they were trying to sell figures to kids and moms, and whoo, I don't know what this is. You know, got weird ball joints up top has almost like yellow eyes and I think those are actually yellow. I don't think that's just the the passage of time. Weird weird proportions on this one. Terrible hips. No no articulation here at the shins. So he's just kind of in this sort of hunched over position. I don't know. I bought it, so that's on me. Here is the figure that I really claim is kind of the Todd McFarlane version. Again, this was one of the four figures that we featured in the panels to plastics. They obviously got thrown back into the box uh, when I was done with that video, but but uh, a good one. Definitely should check that out. Hey, <laughs> speaking of figures for kids, it's Webman. Oh, I love Webman. So Webman appeared in one single comic. It was an issue of Spidey Super Stories, and that was a comic book that was definitely geared more toward kids. I don't even think that it, it fit in continuity-wise with the rest of the Spider-Man titles, but it was like an eight-page story where Doctor Doom like had Spidey look through some kind of like enchanted mirror, and his opposite image came out. You can see that the colors are inverted. The blues are red, the reds are blue. And boom, you get Webman, who then fought Spidey. And in the span of eight pages, Spidey was able to defeat Webman and Doctor Doom. Pretty effective. This is, I think, pretty much on the retro Spidey body, which is one of the best Spidey bodies that we've gotten because it's muscular, but it's really articulated. And then that looks like the head, obviously repainted, but the head that uh, came on, like, the... Uh, the Captain Britain Spider-Man, I want to say. It's really kind of a, a nice cross between John Romita Sr. and Steve Ditko's eyes. I really would love to see more of this head in, in red because we could use it. But Webman, how much freaking fun is Webman? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, this should be the last of our panels to plastics. This is the Umberto Ramos version of Spider-Man. And this is the one that went full Ramos with the giant knobby hands, the huge feet, and those very, very distinctive Umberto Ramos eyes. Really cool. Now, there were a couple of other figures, like this one that was on the Spidey Classics body that kind of had that Umberto Ramos look. Here's another one that has sort of the offset eyes that are asymmetrical. Very cool. Check it out. This was Diamond Select. So this guy, this Spider-Man came in a two-pack with Dr. Octopus, with like a modern version of Dr. Octopus. I don't know that that head is really meant to represent any one specific artist. It definitely has kind of a McFarlane sort of flair to it. I'm not sure what kind of... I don't think it's on a ball peg, so I'm not sure that you could take it off and try to switch it out. The eyes are a little low set for me. I think if they were moved up just a touch, it would look a little bit better. And then the articulation is fairly limited. There's nothing through the waist. He's only got the T-joints at the hips. He does have some fairly limited ball joints here but yeah it was good because it was kind of like a 
extra figure. Like, you were buying the modern octopus, and you ended up getting a Spider-Man with it. Okay, here's a cool one. So this is, again, this is from Spider-Man Classics. So Spider-Man Classics is a six-inch line that's running parallel to Marvel Legends, and it allowed them to really kind of crank out some different looks for Spider-Man. Now, this one is kind of pre-posed. Like, he's really sort of with the way that his torso is sculpted. He's really kind of only going to be in this position. He's got good, pretty good articulation. His head, like, it's never going to fit necessarily looking forward. He's always really kind of meant to be looking this way. But you could get this guy into some pretty dynamic shots. Take advantage of him. This is a custom. No. Yeah, no, no. This is just a... This may be one of the early Hasbro Marvel Legends. You know, Hasbro did this kind of knee joint. Ooh, I don't want to break that. Oh, because I'm doing it backwards. Because his foot's backwards. There we go. But I didn't really hate the way that they got that knee to work because when it's not be being bent, it's a, it's a fairly subtle joint, really. But I kind of like this Black Spidey because he's really thin. Like, he's that kind of thin, acrobatic Spider-Man. Limited here because I don't love what they did with that elbow. But that's a cool black suit Spidey. Oh, here's a bad one. Okay, so it's great. I love it because this box, you can grab, like, a really... That actually is, is a custom. I got that off of eBay. That's that's not great. But you can grab, like, a really great figure, like, say, this Spider-Man Classics that was dedicated to the art of John Romita Jr. So when John Romita Jr. came back and was drawing Peter Parker Spider-Man around the time of the Clone Saga and thereafter, I think this really kind of captures that square look of his art. I really think that head sculpt is very, very much John Romita Jr. Unfortunately, this, this figure came with, like, way, 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 way too much paint wash to try to get those black lines in. And you can see here where I attempted to kind of kind of clean it off to make it look more red, and it just doesn't work. There, there may be another one in here, but this is, this is John Romita Jr. So you get that, you get, like, these awesome Umberto Ramos ones. I'm not sure if this one I tried to clean or it just sort of came that way. And then you get crap like this. Oh, my gosh. So for everybody who's like, Toy Biz is great. I love everything they do. Hasbro never does anything. Yeah, Toy Biz did this, too. Like, they would they would sometimes let out, like, a real stinker. Like, you got to figure somebody's, like, sitting around the factory, and they're like, all right, this, these are the parts that we have left over. What can we make out of this? And they come up with this poor, poor Ben Riley Spider-Man. And then, apparently, they got, you know, some drunk kid to, like, paint the eyes on this. Those aren't even close. Like, first of all, they've got to rotate that way and come down a little bit. They don't match up with the center of his mask. Oh, this is so bad. But I love Ben Riley so much that if they make a Ben Riley figure, I'm going to buy it. And even, like, crap, you know, crap articulation here. But then it's got articulated fingers. I mean, it's literally like you just threw everything that was left at the bottom of the bucket in and said, Ben Riley, have at it. Poor guy. Uh, this is nice. Okay, so this is the... Oh, here we go. Oh, do a little comparison. So this is the Spidey 2099 that's on the Pizza Spidey buck. It obviously has new parts there. Got really, really great fingers. And this metallic paint sculpt is just gorgeous. The spider on his chest is really big. Look at how they didn't skimp with the butterfly joints, and they actually painted the inside there so that if you have him coming forward, the paint works. But if you have his butterfly joints back and he's in this really cool pose, it continues the logo. Plus, talking about just crushing it with this head sculpt and the paint application. I love it. So this is like a newer version. I want to say, yep, here's the very, very newest. So this is the one that, I think I guess it was on the retro card back. So that that first figure had been out of circulation, was hard to get. And so they gave us another one. So this one's pretty good. I don't think that it's that it looks as good. Like I think I love the more shiny blue metallic more than the matte blue metallic. Head sculpt's pretty much the same, but then the logo on the chest of this newer one's significantly smaller than the older one. They both had the, the web wing, which really was effective. This one has it. It's probably just down in the box somewhere. But I, I gotta say, I like the original better than the newer one, but if you never got a chance to pick this one up, 
this is still a great figure. I mean, there's still, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. And if, if you didn't have this one standing right next to it, you would think that this is like the definitive Spidey 2099 figure. And of course he came with a bunch of extra hands, which is, which is always sweet, man. I'm so thankful for that. But then we go back in time to the Spider-Man classics line. And here's like a way earlier version. It'd be great if we could get a year on this one. 2006. So you can see what a difference, you know, 15 years makes. I I don't hate this. I don't hate the soft goods cape. I do really hate the kind of bungee cord that it's, you know, attached to him with. He's got, you know, sort of, well, no, he's got the articulated toy biz fingers. Uh, That paint is okay. I mean, and, and I like the shiny metallic blue, but I mean, just what, what an unbelievable difference, you know, 10, 10, 12, 15 years can make in action figure technology, how much better this one is than this one. Still cool, though. Anytime you give us different Spider-Men, I'm going to be down with it. You know, unless they're like soup, you know, scuba aquatic Spider-Man. Not sure what was going on there. Okay, maybe this was the one I was thinking of. Maybe this was the one that was kind of early in the Hasbro line. Yeah, see, he's got, that's another hallmark of that kind of early Hasbro time were these uh, squared off kneecaps. Uh, that's what you see on like the yellow jacket figure. So it's probably sharing a lot of parts with that. He's a little bit bulkier, a little bit wider. He also, they did a cool job with kind of giving the lighter blue. So it's not just a flat black figure. He's got a little bit of blue in there, you know, compared to here's like basically another version of that one that we just saw. But see how the blue highlights really kind of make the contours of the of the outfit stand out? A little squared, you know, a little bit, you know, even these biceps are are kind of angular. You know, they're not the round kind of look. But it's cool. I mean, again, keep making them, man. You keep making them, I'll keep buying them. Especially when they are sweet like this, Spider-Ham. Oh my gosh. Spider-Ham was at the top of, you know, virtually everyone's wish list for so, so long. And I know we would all like for him to have, you know, bendable knees and you know, a little bit more articulation up here. I would actually like for the head sculpt to be a little more classic, a little bit more like the way Michael Golden drew him in some of his very first appearances. But still, that's Spider-Ham. You can't deny it. I love it. I'm so glad that we got it. Here's another version of that John Romita Jr. Spidey that I call him. This one where I haven't tried to scale the paint off. Although maybe I did. Maybe I did try to spit shine it right there a little bit that's a dangerous game you know you can end up ruining a a 20 year old figure in a hurry by doing that here's a big boy yeah this was the uh i don't think these were called icons i think this was like before the icons line this was like the toy biz 12 inch figures and we got the peter parker unmasked head got the sweet mask kind of folded up he's uh on that same sort of mcfarland body you can see all of this detailed musculature again each and every finger is articulated. Huh, it's hard to beat that. Uh, good figure. A little bit of a thin Peter face. He's almost got sort of a haircut that looks more like Ultimate Spider-Man, more so than 616 Spider-Man. But that thin head kind of fits just sort of this lanky, lanky body that we have there. Oh, here's a good one. So this was the Web Armor Mach 1. And this is the original web armor figure that came from Toy Biz. And you can see he had like a play feature where he, oh, there's the button. So it would like shoot out like a web, but that really limited the articulation here at the elbow and the shoulder. Better here, but a pretty good representation of what that spectacular Spider-Man issue web armor looked like. I like that mask. Yeah, that looks like it. It's pretty good. We've gotten a newer one of these in the retro line, but this was the first one that we got in the six inch line. Okay, here's another one of those customs that I bought, tangled up with like four other figures. Let's see if we can get this guy untangled here. That's the problem with some of these play features. They'll they'll get caught with everything else. And that's like a actually, let's take a look at that. So here here's the play feature on two different Spider-Man. Okay. Let's look at this one. So we saw this figure a minute ago, but without the web thing this is that one that was kind of pre-posed looking to the side but here he is with a magnetic web that shoots supposed to shoot out and it'll attach to your refrigerator and i guess spidey can swing from it this 
again, has that exact same kind of web, magnetic web motif, but this is meant to represent Ultimate Spidey. And he's got that classic back spider from Ultimate Spidey. Mark Bagley drew that spider with the legs kind of all touching, you know, unlike, let's just grab another Spider-Man, where the spider's legs are separated. Ultimate Spider-Man kind of had them all meshed together. So that's one of the ways that you can tell that this is meant to be an Ultimate Spider-Man. Plus, look at how his head is bigger than his body. So it's meant to represent that he's like a teenager and he hasn't like fully grown into his shape yet. He's still like really kind of small and lean, but uh, he's got that sort of bagly look to those eyes. So that's a pretty cool ultimate Spidey Peter Parker. I dig that. And then while we're pulling out figures that are stuck to everything, this is meant to be a Spider-Man noir. Uh, again, it was a custom, custom figure that I bought off of eBay that is caught up in another figure. We'll just look at it while we're at it. Another one of the Spider-Man Classics ones. Again, very limited articulation because that shoulder is set in place, but kind of a cool figure. And then I personally don't like the Iron Spider suit. Uh, I do think this one's kind of cool because he's translucent. All that red is translucent, but not a huge fan of Iron Spider. What I am a huge fan of, though, is my main man Ben Riley is back with this fantastic Scarlet Spider again on the Pizza Spidey buck. It just works. And, you know, they, they gave us the extra accessories with the hoodie, with the hood down. He's got the stuff at his, at his ankles and his wrists. He's got a belt on. Oh, so good. And then they put this one on a retro card back, too. So if you didn't get the, the first release, you did at least get another chance at that spectacular, spectacular Spider-Man figure. Okay, yeah, here's the Marvel Legends version. Wasn't this like a GameStop exclusive, this PS4 Spider-Man? So we saw the the Diamond Select 7-inch. Here's the 6-inch PS4 Spider-Man with the big white spider on the front and the very Raimi-esque white spider on the back. Very nice. I get a lot of questions and comments about this, asking if this is the best Spider-Man figure. This is the Revoltech Spider-Man. And I will grant you, he is one of the most articulated Spider-Man figures, but this is a situation where the articulation just, I mean, God, look at that. Look at, look at all the articulation at the head. I, I don't even remember that, but it's, it's like articulated in like numerous ways. I actually popped it off, but I mean, that's cool. And I like the innovation, and I like the thought process, and I like the fact that these joints, they they hinge, and so they'll stay in place. Those are great fingers. Those are great wall-crawling hands. But it's so articulated that it messes with the look. And so I just can't, I can't, I mean, those shoulders with that huge gap, yeah, it'll kind of come back, but that, to get that look, it swings those shoulders out so far that, eh, I don't know. I don't, I just, I don't love it. Here is Spidey's co-creator, Stan Lee, who actually is pretending to be Spider-Man underneath. I think this came out as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Very cool. This is the, one of the earliest Todd McFarlane versions of Spider-Man, but it has a different head sculpt. This wasn't the head sculpt that first came with the figure. This is a slightly different one. But this was in the the five inch line as the five inch line was just kind of continuing to creep up in size, getting closer to the six inch line. That's the custom one that I was thinking somebody kind of painted the the purple on there. Yeah, I don't know. I definitely this is the same figure, actually. That's funny. I didn't mean to do that, but this is the exact same figure without all the paint. I definitely like this one better, for sure. Okay, here we go. Again, ha! You guys may not have seen this one. This is cool. This was in the, the Toy Biz Spider-Man Classics line, probably from the early to 2006. This looks like what it says. But this is a quick change. Maybe not as quick as I thought. Boom! Peter Parker head. And so you can switch him from Peter Parker back to Spider-Man. I love it. He's, he's a little big through the chest to accomplish the mechanism of this but still a neat idea and for kids what a great toy I and mean, what a great toy to be able to do that i love it here is another figure that i think was meant to be ultimate spider-man just kind of by the size and the shape of him he doesn't have that definitive ultimate spider on the back but kind of a cool younger looking spidey 
a different paint application with a silver motif instead of the white for the spider in the eyes on that one. This is the accessory that came with the very first Spider-Man Classics figure. So cool. It had like a little white, or excuse me, like a little clear peg so you could mount this to the wall and have Spidey hanging from it or you could have it just as a base like his, his spider signal was on it. Nice detail where he's webbed his camera there in the corner over the top of a window so that he can take pictures for the Daily Bugle. Just a really, really cool base that came out in 2001 from Toy Biz. Awesome. Iron Spider leg. These are the accessories that came with Stan Lee. So if you wanted to switch Stan into Peter Parker or Spider-Man, you could do that. Very cool. Ah, here we go. Here's the, the, uh, the blue version of that 8-inch figure that we saw earlier. Good. You know, just a good kind of standard Spidey. Just because he's not in scale with anything else, I don't really have a lot of place for him. But it's a good figure. It's cool to look at. Here is... That Spider-Man Classics, that original Spider-Man Classics body, but with yet another head sculpt on it. So just another way to get a different look for Spider-Man. Uh, oh, you know what this is? This is actually the Stan Lee with, with all of the Spider-Man parts. So they kind of used the Amazing Fantasy 15 head and that sort of Amazing Fantasy 15 body, only they had it painted red and blue instead of red and black. It does have kind of the original... It's not a perfect rendition of the original Spider logo on the back, but it's closer than what we've seen otherwise. But it's kind of cool that the Stan Lee figure, when he turned into Spidey, he turned into, like, the original version of Spidey. So that's choice. Here is an animated figure. I don't remember which of the Disney cartoons this came from, but it's a good, clean, fun Spider-Man toy. I'm sure I picked it up at Walmart or Target just because... Because it's Spider-Man, and I loved it, so I thought I'd get it. Another of those sort of pre-posed Spideys. Again, this is that same one I think that we looked at, but this is this is the one, but he, he's, I don't have the, the web attachment going on. So here's kind of Ultimate Spidey without all the accoutrement, but he still has that cool logo on the back. Another one of the... Spidey 2099s, such a great figure. You know, when, when they have a figure that's this perfect... I'm, I'm going to grab a couple of extras, mainly because you've seen what happens. I mean, sometimes these things break, and I really love them for action figure photography and poses and trying to recreate classic comic covers. And, you know, if I accidentally break one, it's always nice to have a spare. So, ah, here we go. Here is the main Marvel Legends line release of the first appearance Spider-Man. So this is the Amazing Fantasy 15 Spider-Man. Again, a little bit of a different logo, much more of the Jack Kirby mask that Jack drew for the cover of Amazing 15. Uh, nice. You know, a nice figure. He came with that stupid web cape trying to replicate Spidey's underarm webs that just didn't work. I mean, you can see that, you know, I, I, I appreciate you trying, but man, that did not work. But here's a blue version that was with the Stan Lee. Here's the black version. Cool. Yeah. The old... The old six-arm Spidey. Ah, uh, something's gotten on his head. You know, people gave this figure a hard time, too, because it just didn't have quite as much of the of the paint wash, but I don't care. I think it's cool. I think it's, you know, this happened. I mean, this happened in the comics, and so if it's a rendition of Spidey that occurred in the comics, I want to I wanna get it and play with it. The Marvel Universe, Spidey 2099. Again, nice job with the web cape. For some reason, his web cape just works, whereas everybody else's absolutely doesn't. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the body that the the famous uh, Snapshot Spidey is on, the one that has the very, very John Romita head, but this one obviously has a different head sculpt. I can't remember if this came out in, like, a box set, but it has the exact same problems that I have with my Snapshot Spidey is that the articulation just really dies over time. It doesn't hold up. He gets into some, like, really good crouching poses, and he's got these crazy, crazy butterfly joints. I've never loved this figure. This figure, people just rave about it, the, the snapshot Spidey. I've never loved it because I always thought the shoulders were just way too big. And then this articula articulation mechanism just didn't, didn't work for me. But, I don't know, some people like it. There's another one of the Amazing Fantasy 15 Spideys. Very cool. 
Here is, oh, here we go. Here is a first edition Spidey Classics figure with the Amazing Fantasy 15 head. So I popped the head off, tried to get a more Ditko looking Spidey for that one. Oh, I, I'm telling you, retro card back Spidey, the new, you know, Spidey with Spinneret. I actually haven't gotten that one yet. You're really going to be hard pressed for me to beat Pete's Spidey. There's something about his frame. There's something about that mask with that smile. I love the Pete's Spidey. This is, you know, down in the secret lounge where I have kind of the display of my best Spideys, like up on the top row. This is the one that I use because I don't know. I just I think this is such a brilliant figure. Absolutely love it. We'll keep we can keep coming back to that. Captain Universe. So kind of a cool thing. So in the '90s, uh, Spidey got the powers of Captain Universe, which for me the cool thing was Captain Universe was a character that was created by Steve Ditko. So it was cool to see another Steve Ditko creation come back and gain the Captain Universe powers. He came with multiple different heads. So you could have like a classic Captain Universe. You could have him with his mask off. And then, of course, you got the version where he assimilated in the Spidey powers. And so this was cool. This happened like either right before or right after Spidey lost his powers. He became like this unbelievable cosmic entity. And, you know, if you had the power of Captain Universe, wouldn't you just punch Hulk into space? Because that's what Spidey did. So, works for me. Here's a part for that Stan Lee figure. This is kind of the second line that came after Famous Covers. So, I'd, I love to talk about Famous Covers. And if you guys want to have a, a whole video dedicated to them, we could. Famous Covers was a line in the late 90s that tried to replicate the success of the Mego figures of the 70s. And it, it lasted for a while, but then it finally kind of petered out. And then... You know, Hasbro kind of tried to bring it back, and uh, these were pretty good, but this is the black suit version of that. Oh, speaking of black suit, now this is awesome. Look at how good this 12-inch Spidey is. I love those giant eyes on this. Very, very McFarlane. Still, even with its kind of mammoth scale, you can still get this thing into some awesome Spidey poses. Dude, that is a good, good figure. Oh, that is so good where that 12-inch line really was working well. Yep, I told you, I love Pizza Spidey. Like, anytime I saw one in the store, I would just snap it up because I just loved it. Oh, this is another custom, I think. Ugh, all right. Hey, look, that's not easy. That's not easy to make a custom of that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to leave him later. Um... This is a figure that I think was based off of the artwork of, of an artist named Care Andrews. And it was cool. He's got little electrodes back here. And so when you plug him into the base, these eyes light up. Uh, I'll have to see if I can find one of the bases for that. But it's a cool figure. It's definitely a, a different version. A couple of more black suits. Here's one that we've seen. Here's one that we haven't. So this is, for me, the definitive black suit Spidey, the, the definitive symbiote Spidey. This is on that same Pizza Spidey buck that I love so much. It has those giant eye pieces, much like what we just saw with that 12-inch figure. He is just so dynamic. You can get him into such unbelievable poses. He's got all the articulation that you could possibly want. This is a fantastic figure. And I know we got a newer one on the kind of the retro Spidey buck, and but he's got s sort of smaller eyes, which I'm okay with. That kind of looks like how Ron Friends drew the black suit, so uh, that has a special place in my heart. But this one, this one is the bomb. That's the one that I like the best. Oh, speaking of, here we go. Here's retro Spidey. Oh, man. I, I'm i very lucky I have a couple of these too because I use these a ton for Spidey photography because they just... This is such a classic Spidey that really, you can use this guy from the Ditko era through the Romita era, through the Gil Kane, Ross Andrew era, really even into the Ron Friends era. This Spidey works for a classic Spidey up until the point of Todd McFarlane. It's just, it is that good. And it comes with two different head sculpts. I find this head sculpt to be a much more Ditko-centric head sculpt, so that's the one that I prefer, but retro Spidey. One of the best. Again, I don't have that Spinneret 2-pack yet, but until I do, this is right there with Pizza Spidey, as these are these are still my two best Marvel Legends Spideys. And you can see the difference. I mean, you can see that Retro Spidey's thicker, you know? 
Pizza Spidey's leaner. He's a little bit longer. He's a little bit thinner. But if you want to go more comic accurate, this guy really defined the 60s and 70s and really most of the 80s, whereas this guy kind of takes the look from the late 80s onward. But they're both fabulous versions of Spider-Man. Here's another Ben Riley on a terrible body. Again, one of those early, wonky Hasbro bodies. But, hey, it's Ben Riley. we got to get him. Another of the Pizza Spidey buck. It's $20.99. Okay, this is, this is that same Care Andrews figures that I showed you that plugs up, but I painted the eyelets white to make it more comic accurate. I didn't do too bad. It actually looks okay. Eh, not so bad. Ah, uh, this is the most recent version of Ultimate Spidey. They didn't get it right, but they got the mask really right. And he came with a swappable... Y oh, he came with a swappable young Peter Parker head. And so here is with the mask on, and here is with his mask off. And that's great, because that is such a teenage Peter Parker. Like, you can tell, that is not like older 20s Peter Parker. That's a teenage Peter Parker. And, and the body frame is smaller. You know, he's significantly smaller than, than what we see even with Pizza Spidey. So even just the look of the jaw and the chin line, you know, you can tell that this is an adult and this is a kid. Great job. Great job on these figures. Another kind of pre-posed Spidey classics, but look at all of that sculpting of the musculature. That's pretty cool. This is uh, one of those Scarlet Spider cane kind of things. I actually, I don't love that whole storyline, so we're not going to get into that. Um, this is uh, the Craven's Last Hunt version with Peter after he'd been really beaten up pretty badly by Craven, buried alive. That That's a good story. If you haven't read that, you should. Here is an animated 2099 figure. Limited articulation, five points of articulation, but that's okay. It's a toy. And then, yes, Mangaverse Spidey. Ha <laughs> ha! Check it out. Again, you got to love Toy Biz for, for giving us all these different versions and really making them so accurate to the books. Very, very choice. Got the claws on his hands. Really, really cool manga verse Spidey. Definitely worth a revisit. We may have to do a panels to plastics on this guy because it is so cool. Ah, one that definitely is a panels to plastics. Uh, Eric Larson's version of of Cyborg Spider-Man from his time on the adjectiveless uh, Spider-Man title. I have this guy paired up oftentimes with Cyborg, like he looked on, or uh, not Cyborg, Cy uh, you know who I'm talking about, on that cover of the uh, Spider-Man comic. Really cool. Definitely got that one right. Very appreciative of that. Oh, I love me some Mayday. She's unfortunately really fragile, and so I've, I've had this happen to a couple of them, but the, here is Mayday Parker, May Parker, Spider Girl, great figure, great, great. Uh, that's that ultimate that we looked at before, and here is kind of huh, look at how look at how weird that head is. Look how big it is. So again, I know we all love to talk about how great Toy Biz is, but they they didn't always hit a home run, guys. That that's pretty wonky. They did hit a home run with this. Now you know this what this is. This is the definitive Ben Riley on the pizza buck, pizza Spidey buck, Spider-Man, so perfect. Absolutely love it. This is the one. So when I have my Spideys lined up, you know, that black suit Spidey, this Spidey, regular Spidey, these are the ones. That is that is what is so good. There's another kind of cool, cool, weird, almost, like that almost looks like Japanese Spider-Man. That head sculpt. It's not, but it kind of almost looks like it. Got another kind of fun animated Spidey going here. And we've just got a couple left. Let's see. Here's a tiny little black Spider-Man. Here is a... Oh, that's the Revoltech arm. Good. I'm glad we found that. And a little bare brick Spidey. So, you know, if it's Spider-Man, I'm going to buy it. So let's finish up with two last ones. First, we will look at the Marvel Select, Diamond Select zombie spider-man from the original marvel zombies line Ooh, look at how just gross and disgusting and well sculpted this is he's got the bones of his fingers coming out you know he's eating human 
flesh. You can see his jaw. You can see his eye poking out. Just everything shattered. The meat coming through. The muscles of his hips. So disgusting. Such a departure for Spider-Man, but such a cool-looking figure. And let's finish up with one that I've kind of always loved. This is a Toy Biz uh, Peter Parker figure that he's got this rubbery costume. And so, oh gosh, it's so rubbery. It's like stuck together. But you can take this off and switch him out and have him look like Spider-Man underneath. You could pop his head off and do that. But really cool. I always love the civilian figures. I love that he's got his web shooters actually on right there. So a very, very cool Peter Parker. So, hey guys, if you love Spider-Man and you love the history of comics and action figures, you have been in the right place with Carbon Scoring. So, don't forget to hang around, check out some of our other videos, and subscribe to Carbon Scoring.